The Yoga Pro Nine I is a very important laptop. For the last two years, it has been my number one pick for programmers, engineers, and content creators, those looking for a high-performance Windows laptop that's still portable. Now, since I've earlier time, I'm just going to tell you the skinny right now. This year, Lenovo has done something really special for this user base. The Yoga Pro Nine I is one of the first laptops to include a tandem OLED display. It is the most stunning display we've ever seen. It also has an even higher resolution, which just makes small code and other content a joy to look at. This year's model, it also gives you around 15-20% to more performance for pretty much no extra power draw, so that's nice to see. And the Yoga Pro Nine I, it continues to have a really comfortable keyboard. But this laptop, it's not perfect. Its battery life, it still sucks, it gets a little warmer than it did in the past for performance use, and at this price point, its slow SD card reader and mechanical trackpad, they're a bit disappointing. Finally, long-running heavy tasks like gaming, it does drain the battery, even while the laptop is plugged in. For this last issue though, you can buy a high-wattage Lenovo charger to solve it. With that said, this laptop is still one of the best laptops out there if you're looking for that perfect blend of performance, portability, and productivity. Now, before we get into the full review, a quick word from today's video sponsor, Ugreen. They've just released their brand new Nexo 100 watt retractable charger. This retractable USB-C cable is short, but it's super handy to have. Say you're on a plane, the outlet is pretty close. It's also great if you want a second cable to use occasionally when you travel. I normally travel with two, a long and short cable. Now I only need to bring one. The charger itself can power up to four devices at the same time. If you only plug in one device, it can charge it at up to 100 watts. That's when using the retractable cable or the first USB-C port. This is enough to charge a MacBook Pro 14 from 0 to around 54% in 30 minutes. But what I really like about this charger is that it can power at 20 volts. This is what you need if you're going to power a powerful laptop with a dedicated GPU like this Yoga Pro Nine I. Not all USB-C chargers are created equal, and this one is one of the best. If you want to grab one, Ugreen are offering these for up to 30% off using the link below. Over to you, Sierra. Thanks, Josh. Since this is a laptop that we recommend for programmers and other people looking for strong CPU performance, we'll start there. This laptop comes with the Ultra 9 285H chip from Intel. This is from their Arrow Lake H line, which is their line for performance laptops that are still portable. Compared to similar laptops with the same chip, it does the best in Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks. Among all laptops, it lands around the middle of the pack, being beat out by laptops with Intel's highest-end Aerolake HX chips and both of our MacBook Pros. When looking at the MacBooks, we'd recommend you compare to one with an M4 Pro chip since that is more in the price range. Moving over to Cinebench, which tests a processor when it's maxed out, we see a similar result. Great performance for this specific chip, but performance is about average when compared to all laptops in a similar size class or price range. Compared to last year's model, we are only seeing about a 10% performance boost in multi-core and around 13% in single-core. This may seem disappointing, but the result starts to look better once you consider that the power draw during these intensive tasks is about the same as it was last year. So we'll take more performance for the same power draw. However, Apple's M4 Pro 14-core chip is still much more efficient. We are even seeing better efficiency from Intel's 275HX chip and Acer's Predator Helios Neo 16S, where its average power draw is only 6 watts more, but its performance is much better. Chips with higher core counts tend to be more efficient. Spreading the load across more cores helps with power efficiency. The Yoga Pro 9i's 285H chip also heats up more than other laptops with the same chip, which makes sense as it performs a bit better and draws more power than it does in those other laptops. It still doesn't heat up as much as last year's 185H chip, which is nice to see. Switching over to GPU performance, we will take a look at TimeSpy first, which is a gaming benchmark that utilizes DirectX 12 and is not compatible with macOS. Here we see that the Yoga Pro 9i is not feeding its GPU full wattage. It is beat out by the Strix G16 with its higher wattage 5060 and a better CPU. But that laptop is a bit larger and heavier with better cooling. The Yoga does almost perform as well as the lower wattage 5070 in the Gigabyte Aero X16, which is a similarly sized laptop. Next, looking at Port Royal, which is a ray tracing benchmark, we see the Yoga Pro do better than last year's edition with a 4060, but not by enough to beat out any of these other laptops. Now, just to get an idea of how its FPS in games compares to other laptops, here's how it did in Cyberpunk with DLSS upscaling on and frame generation off. Here we see it get around 60 FPS, which is certainly playable, but it does do the worst here. Something to note is that this was also run at 2560 by 1600 which is a lower resolution than its display. 
You might even see lower frame rates if you ran games at the full 3200 by 2000. So, for gaming overall, the Yoga Pro 9i is not the best option in this category, but it would still be enjoyable for some gaming on the side, especially if you turn down the settings. Next, let's talk creative tasks. In Puget's Premiere Pro benchmark, it does well, once again beating out the Omen Transcends 5070 and landing around the middle of the pack. It beats the highest-end MacBook Pro 16 with the M4 Max chip, which costs a lot more. But, as you can see, you can still buy even better editing machines in this price range, like the Predator or Zephyrus G16. Moving over to DaVinci Resolve Studio, the MacBook Pros pull ahead here, which makes sense as DaVinci is highly optimized for Metal, which is the API Apple uses. The Yoga Pro does all right here, almost catching up with the MacBook Pro with the M4 Pro chip, which costs a similar amount, as I said. All of these results we've shown you so far are in the performance mode, which is the highest stock mode, but we also like to run some tests in each of the other available modes, which in this case are battery saver and adaptive. Starting with CPU intensive tasks, we see the adaptive mode performs about as well as performance for less fan noise, so we'd probably recommend that mode instead, especially for coders who want to avoid distractions. It does get a bit warm on the keyboard deck under load. We didn't find it was overbearing, but it was noticeable. If you wanted to travel with the 100 watt Ugreen retractable GAN charger, it still performs quite well, but it does get much warmer on the keyboard deck in that use case, so keep that in mind. We found this odd, so we did retest it and got the same results. Moving over to Forza, which helps us test thermals and power draw for CPU and GPU intensive tasks, we could see it either way here. Adaptive gives you better fan noise for worse average FPS and 1% lows. Performance runs the fans higher and appears to feed the CPU a bit more power. When Seth was testing, he actually found something very unfortunate. The battery seems to very slowly drain anytime the laptop is under a CPU and GPU heavy load. The only time this didn't happen was in Battery Saver, where it doesn't pull as much wattage and performs much worse. We sometimes see this when a laptop is using a lower wattage USB-C charger, but it's very rare that we see it when it's using its included charger, which is 170 watts. This is a fairly new test for us, so we went back and retested last year's Yoga Pro 9i and found the same issue. We looked online and several Redditors claimed that using a Lenovo 230 watt charger fixes this. So we tried one of the ones we had here and it didn't fix it for us. Let me jump in Sierra. After the team told me about this, I did reach out to Lenovo. They said that this was by design so that they could bundle a smaller and lighter charger with this laptop. They did say that there is a larger charger available that solves this issue. I'll link it down below. Nonetheless, I'm not happy about this. Most people expect that if you plug your laptop in using the included power brick, it won't drain the battery. This can put wear and tear on your battery. If you are doing something that hits the laptop hard for a long time, like gaming, you really want to buy that other charger or another laptop. Short bursting tasks like programming, you'll be fine with those, especially if they only hit the CPU. It depends what you're coding though. Even rendering a video, as long as it's not that long, it's probably not the end of the world. Overall, we really feel Lenovo should give you the option of the higher wattage charger when you buy from their own store. At that point, they should clearly explain the pros and cons of each charger. Now, if you are comparing this laptop to Asus's Zephyrus G16, it doesn't have this issue because they bundle it with a higher wattage charger. Back to you, Sierra. When we compare heat and fan noise to other laptops in the same class, we see that the Yoga Pro 9i can get a bit warm. In CPU intensive tasks, it gets warmer than last year's version on almost all of the gaming laptops that likely feature more robust cooling solutions. Its fan noise is a little on the high end, but the same as last year. In Forza, which we use to test heat and fan noise when both the CPU and GPU are utilized, it does about the same. It gets warm on the keyboard deck, but so do the rest of these laptops. The Strix G16 is the only one we've really seen stay cool in this test, which, as I said, is a bulkier laptop. If you wanted to do any performance tasks while unplugged, you'd still be getting a decent amount of performance out of the Yoga Pro. It doesn't maintain its full performance, but it stays above 1000 in Cinebench, which is plenty of performance for most. As far as how long it lasts on battery, We've got some bad news. There is no iGPU-only mode that we could track down on this machine, which means that the GPU is probably still sucking power in light tasks. Its tandem OLED screen also likely pulls some serious power. This is evident when we see that it lasted less than six hours in both our video playback and Microsoft Office scenarios. Windows laptops with dedicated graphics that feature an iGPU-only mode and don't have tandem OLED panels like the Aero X16 and Zephyrus G16 both do much better here. The MacBooks, of course, went out, but that's almost always the case when looking at performance-oriented laptops. Let's now get into how the laptop looks and feels. Its chassis looks mostly the same from last year, with only the logo on the lid moving. 
It comes in a pretty boring gray, but the lid doesn't seem to attract fingerprints, which is nice. It also feels very premium with minimal screen flex. The hinge feels sturdy enough to utilize the touchscreen without it moving backwards. It does have a little keyboard deck flex though that is only noticeable near the middle of the keyboard. Overall, it still feels well-built and sturdy. This is good since the chassis is pretty heavy at 4.5 pounds. Lighter than last year, but not by much. It also has a more compact 170 watt charger than last year's. Out of the laptops we are comparing it to today, it looks relatively light because these are mostly gaming laptops, but the similarly sized Aero X16 and Zephyrus G16 are lighter. The MacBook Pro 16, while a bit heavier, has a more compact chassis than the Yoga. Last thing to note on the chassis is that it does have a bit of a sharp edge at the front of the keyboard. This is only noticeable if you are using the laptop without wrist support, like on a plane's tray table. Next, we'll talk display, and honestly, wow. This 16 inch 3200 by 2000 tandem OLED screen is beautiful. It's super high resolution, gets super bright at over 1000 nits, has 120 hertz refresh rate, and it covers a wide color gamut. Text looks so good on this screen too. We feel this is a dream display for a programmer or Excel warrior. With such a bright display, reflections are easier to deal with. It is a glass screen and it is a touch screen. We did not notice any screen door effect or PWM flickering on the display, which is very good to see. These issues are common on most OLEDs. It also supports Advanced Optimus, which means you can switch into dedicated GPU mode without rebooting. Please note, the laptop came with HDR on by default, which made some standard content look washed out. This is a Windows issue, not a Lenovo one. We'd recommend turning HDR off for non-HDR content. The laptop also doesn't seem to support G-Sync, which is a bit disappointing. Another thing with the screen is that you do not get the tandem OLED with the 50-50 versions of this laptop. Both of those configurations come with a regular OLED rated up to 500 nits with a slightly lower 2.8K resolution. We are sure it still looks nice, but it likely isn't as stunning as this one is. The keyboard is another place this laptop shines. Lenovo always provides a comfortable typing experience on their laptops, and this one is especially good. It feels like it has ample travel, and the keys have a nice, satisfying click to them without sounding overly loud. The backlight is white, and there is some backlight bleed around the keys, which also seems to be a Lenovo staple. That means that you might get blinded when looking at the keys from certain angles. There is also a new coating on the keys, which Josh felt was a bit slippery. I found it felt soft. Unlike Lenovo's phenomenal keyboards, their trackpads are basic and we feel could use some work, particularly at this price point. The Yoga Pro 9i's trackpad just isn't as accurate or natural feeling as haptic ones, which we really think it should have at this price point. This one has a bit of a muted thump sound when you click, which I like because it's not very loud. Our tester Seth did notice that it would have a louder, higher pitched click every so often though. This was specifically when you went from left to right click, which was strange. This is pretty minor, but it's our job to be nitpicky. For ports, we see a nice selection on this laptop. On the left, we have a proprietary charging port, an HDMI 2.1 port, two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports that support charging, and a headphone mic combo jack. On the right, we have two 5 gigabit USB-A ports, one of which is always on, and a full-sized SD card reader. Also on the right side, at the top is the power button, and at the bottom is a webcam privacy shutter. We don't love the lack of Thunderbolt 5 and charging capable ports on both sides, but other than that, we like this port selection. The speakers on this laptop are surprisingly good. Unlike most laptops, it has a decent bass, which leads to a fuller sound. Nick and I did notice it was lacking a bit of clarity in the instrumentals. It also had some very minor distortion for high-pitched vocals. It almost sounded like it was tripping over itself for a second. Overall though, these speakers still have a very enjoyable sound to them. <laughs> Here's how the 1440 webcam looks and sounds on the Yoga Pro 9i. It's pretty decent. Now, if you're using dimmer lights like I am right now, here's how I look. I certainly look a lot more grainy. As far as Linux goes, we booted up Fedora 42 and everything worked. Brightness up and down, webcam, keyboard, backlight, etc. We did have to disable secure boot though. For maintenance, we found the back was a little difficult to remove, requiring a star bit on our screwdriver. Three of the screws, the ones at the back, were also longer than the rest of them. Once we got it open, we saw that there is an extra full-size M.2 slot for an NVMe SSD, a short included SSD, and a replaceable battery. RAM and Wi-Fi card were both soldered. Back to you, Josh. All right, let me close this out. I was a professional programmer for well over a decade, and I still do a lot of content creation on my laptops. 
I personally go for laptops like this one that give you that perfect balance of productivity and portability. If I was shopping for one, I'd buy the Yoga Pro Nanai if I was mostly sitting at a desk, plugged in, enjoying its wonderful screen and comfortable keyboard, and I didn't do all that much gaming. If I wanted the safest bet, I'd buy the Zephyrus G16. It doesn't have the high highs of the Yoga, but it doesn't have the low lows either. Its battery life is longer, and it is much better for gaming with its high tier GPUs. If I wanted the most performance in this category, I'd get Asus Predator Helios Neo 16S. It has a significantly more powerful Intel HX processor and RTX 5070 Ti GPU. It does get warmer to the touch though, and it also has bad battery life. If I was okay with Mac OS, I'd choose the MacBook Pro 16 over any of these laptops. It has the longest battery life, least heat and fan noise, and is the most premium all-round laptop, but it is expensive, especially if you spec it up. Finally, if you have the money to spend and are a risk taker, the Razer Blade 16 now has a very comfortable keyboard, which was a big problem with it before. It also has options for much higher tier GPUs, but it is expensive and Razer products are well known to have niggling issues and dealing with their support is an absolute nightmare. If you want the best price on any of these laptops, then head on over to our website at bestlaptop.deals. Over there, we have a price tracker that tracks prices right across retailers. We specifically call out when a laptop's price makes it a good or great deal. You can set custom price drop notifications. We really are building a hub for laptop buying. And if you have any feedback for us on this video or the website, just leave it in the comment down below. Anyway, we're off to review another laptop. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.